The three of us have finished Control now, and there is a lot to unpack. So we decided, the three of us, because we finished it, we'd get together, sit around a couple of mics, and dig in to this game. We'll spoil the heck out of it. So if you haven't finished Control yet, I would click out, uh, save this, like this video, come back to it later, and make sure to let us know what you think. But Peter, you reviewed it, gave it an 8 out of 10. Top level, what are your thoughts on Control? Uh, a great quintessential Remedy experience that I've been waiting a long time for, especially after playing Quantum Break um, a couple years back, which was okay, but this is just far better than okay. It, it's really great, and uh, maybe more than that. Mm -hmm. And Sean, you finished it as well? Yep, I'll agree with everything you just said, except that Quantum Break's a little better than you put it, but... Uh, Control definitely brought something that Quantum Break was missing and that, you know, Alan Wake had in the past. Yeah, I mean, I think having finished it, we were talking about a little, this a little bit on the podcast, GameSpot After Dark, I think it might be my favorite Remedy game. Uh, Alan Wake is tough to beat. Agreed. Uh, just because of the, the, the atmosphere, the setting, uh, but I think at the end of the day, I was way more invested in Control. They're, they have... There's one big difference between the two games, and that's the setting, right? Where Control is set within this single location, albeit a big one with a lot of different things. Alan Wake was pretty much like, you know, a lot of nature, right? A lot of being outdoors and, um, but yeah, it, it, there's that common foreboding, mysterious, sinister force being inflicted upon these characters and they don't really know why or what it's capable of and, and you're along for the ride and goddamn, is it fun. <laughs> and interesting. Yeah, I mean, I guess why don't we start with the gameplay since I think that's probably the easiest to digest yeah. from this. And, and one notable thing is how it builds over time, right? Like when you start the game, you're not really doing much. You're just shooting enemies, maybe doing like the little palm on them, like in the face, you know? The melee attack. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, eventually you, I mean, Jesse Faden becomes a superhero pretty much. Yeah, it doesn't take too long. Like I'd say... It the first power she get is the ability to like pick up objects from the distance and throw them and like and that's dash cool. and dash yeah um but yeah once it starts to click it's this fascinating juggling act between gunplay and superpowers yeah for sure yeah and i think this is what it definitely sets it apart from alan wake is i feel like it plays it's more fun to play i really do like alan wake but i don't look back on the gameplay as much as like the story and kind of like the cinematography of those scenes and whatnot but this one like if i was going to play another one I would want to play something like Control. It, it's just a lot of fun when those things are meshing together. Yeah, replaying Alan Wake, I know you've been doing the same too. Uh, you you have these great, like, like the story's great, the characters are great, and then you get to the combat. And it's not that the combat's bad, but I feel like they're just long stretches of going through the forest and, and aiming your flashlight at enemies, which is fun. But he keeps this running is, out of breath. And he keeps running out of breath, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this is far more frenetic and fast-paced, and you really feel... In, in control. control. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we we're both thinking the yeah, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, playing Alan Wake right now, like a little bit in my spare time, and it's like, I could just do without the combat. Um, control really does make it shine, and it's also like a technical kind of showcase as well for um, Remedy's Northlight engine, I think it's called. Yep. Um, right. Yeah. It pushes the current consoles to their limit, it seems. Uh, but playing it on PC unhindered, it is just beautiful. It's amazing. Like, how chaotic combat can be. It really feels like a battle is taking place, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're not in a plastic environment. You're in a reactive environment. Yeah, yeah, just seeing... Yeah, exactly. Like after you get through a battle and you've been pulling pieces off the wall and throwing it at enemies, and then once the dust is settled, there's chunks of the wall missing, tables are broken. It's, it's impressive. I walk into a room even without combat. I walk in and I see like an array of desks, and I'm like... Ah. Pick something up and just <laughs> chuck it across Smash the top and watch all the staplers and documents and desks just like fly. It's, it's or really like cool. I love just dashing through things because sure. like they'll just shatter. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys? How many times did you have the map open? Want to close the map and end up just dashing forward into something? <laughs> Maybe a couple. I yeah. did that all the time. Uh, I will say though, uh, there is something very satisfying about the first time when you're in a fight. You're like, crap, I'm out of ammo. I'll try the grab and you just t pick a chunk of the wall up for the first time and it's like, oh, I have. I have ammo forever. I can grab anything and attack with. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, near the end, I think I relied way more on my throw opposed to any of my guns because it yep. did so much more damage and it was just satisfying, like, especially when you hit some of those enemies and they backflip and... It's, it's yeah, the, gun, the guns really do feel... Like, and I will say maybe the charge shot more than anything else is impactful, but 
every other gun kind of feels like a stopgap while you're waiting for your abilities to yeah. get more juice so you can use them again. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't. I didn't use like the charge shot at all. My primary was the pistol. The pistol was just really good. Yeah. And the uh, pierce, because I could shoot from like forever far away. Oh, is that the one I'm thinking of? That might be the. Oh, the yes. charge shot has the You're three. Right. That one's like the the proximity like EMP sort of thingy. Yes. The pierce. That's the, the one. Yeah, okay. that's what I used to, especially on those floating guys, because if you didn't pay yeah, attention exactly. to them, that and is... you could just shoot them right out of the sky, and be yep. like, all right. That's exactly it. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, that's the gameplay, but I think the real meat of this discussion is going to be the story and what that might be about. Now, I don't think any of us have concrete ideas of exactly what happened or what happens throughout the game, apart from, you know, what you witness. Um, so there, there's a lot to discuss. I don't even know where to start. Let's, let's just set it up. Like, who's Jesse Faden? Right. Jesse Faden, you know, she enters this building. She's got this inner monologue going on where she's like, I don't even remember exactly what she's saying, but she's talking to herself and yeah, there's a to... there's a poster and behind the poster there's something that creeps out every now and then she, she's like she like even references like Shawshank Redemption at one point yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like that movie where they escape from the prison yeah. and then at the end she's like Shawshank Redemption that's the movie I was thinking of and I was like cool All I was right. like I, I was like could have told what you, you that been talking about yeah so that that whole poster on the wall thing I'm still kind of struggling with that a little bit but the the idea of this conversation she's having with herself and another entity another force mm. some people in the office were like oh is she breaking the fourth wall and talking to me no, no that's what not. i thought at first yeah really and then she starts actually talking about polaris and you're like I oh think, okay i feel like maybe i was like paying too much attention to like the lead up to this game where i was just like no there's something else that's mm. that's driving her in her thoughts and stuff i guess we'll wait until we get into what that is but one of the first things that happens after she you know she enters this building and it's like her first day on the job and it's like where is everybody you know she goes through metal detector and did you guys look at the notes next to the metal yeah. detector where it's like no archetypal typical objects allowed like xyz no you can't pencils have... no smartphones and no... right and and the reason why they don't have smartphones is because new technology explodes in there because the the hiss or whatever that's going like not i don't know the the oldest house just doesn't interact with it. I don't know if you found that oh, document. I didn't no. notice that. Yeah. That must be why there's typewriters everywhere. Yeah, that's I was what, trying that's to figure out like typewriters. what year is this? Because right. there's a bunch of evidence that's like 2014. I'm like, yeah, but there's no computers or anything. I well, forget the exact document, but yeah, it was like, don't bring any of those because for some reason, the oldest house just does not get along with that kind of equipment. Isn't there, uh, so d- staying on topic, but diverting a little bit, the idea of like archetype, you know, like objects. Um, I am going to Google to kind of like look into the background of some of these concepts. Like, the idea of archetypes in Jungian psychology showed, I saw this image of the idea of self and it was represented by a character, the figure looking into a mirror and seeing themselves and like, yes, that's me. That's the concept of self. And then Rob Hanley was saying like, have you noticed there aren't really any mirrors in this game? Yeah. I was like, Jesus, God, they took it that far. Like, <laughs> they're oh, all, they're, I never even noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like all these little touches like that. And so she goes into well, the building. There is one mirror. There, there, is, there one is one mirror. mirror. Which I, know, is, I know, I know. We have to cool, talk which, about that later. Which plays into the idea <laughs> yeah. of self, right? So she anyway, but she walks in and like she meets uh, Ati, this janitor who you can understand about half of what he's saying. Yeah. And the rest of it's mumbling. Subtitles, that's a cheat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's immediately intriguing, and he's kind of confusing the situation because you know you're there for a job, but he says you're there for an interview to be his assistant, and it's kind of like, okay, oh, are you are you there for a job? I thought you had just found this place and you were just kind of like investigating. No, you here out there for a job? Okay, yeah, I missed yeah. that one then. I mean, she knew she's been in the place before. Oh, I I must have missed that because I thought she wasn't able to get to this building until she had needed to. That was the point of the oldest house. I think she was taken away from it at one point, but. W- I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but isn't she one of the threshold kids, quote unquote? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But wasn't that back in in ordinary? Oh, was that? I thought that it, I thought they had done that. I could be wrong. Yeah. No, I may, maybe I'm mixing things up, but I'm sure I am, and I'm sure we're all mixing something up because uh, this story is pretty twisted. But yeah, like so the the idea of threshold kids is a series of tapes that, as I interpreted it, based on this one note, was that the show was made to help the kids that were living at the oldest house because they were vectors for this kind of crazy bullshit and they had to be contained to allow them to cope with where they were okay so we w- there were videos using puppets to help the kids have like a proxy for themselves dealing with difficult situations that makes sense I'll to me it presented in a really creepy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, some of sure. those were like oh uh. 
Um, <laughs> but so she travels into the office, you know, runs into this janitor, and then ends up going to the director's office, and he kills himself right before. So just to backtrack a little bit, one of the interesting things I noticed replaying the beginning was that uh, she, a- after she has that discussion with the janitor and she starts moving, she says something to herself about something about his face or something like that, or, or the face of things, and he responds to what she says in her head. Yeah, I didn't notice that the first time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to <laughs> read into that, but I was like, whoa, maybe there's, well, I mean, obviously there's more to this janitor because he's the most one of the most interesting characters in the game, but still I was like, yeah there's something I missed about why he can understand what's in my head. <laughs> yep. I'm still not really, yeah, like you said, it's, not, it's still hard to figure out where he fits into all this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like the most powerful character in like this wor- entire right. world. Mm-hmm. Right. Because even there's tons of documents of being like, have you noticed the gender doing doing this? It's not supposed how, to be here. How exactly. Here? How did he even get through this thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, like after you get through the maze, yep. <laughs> there's like notes like how the did the janitor get here? <laughs> yep. Uh, so Ati's great, and then yeah, you get to the director, and he quickly offs himself, and it's this. I think it creates this weird delta of understanding where you're like, "Am I gonna end up killing myself?" Yeah. But did he right. actually kill himself, or was it somebody else? Like, I have a voice in my head. Did he have a voice in his head? Um, but then very quickly, as you start exploring past that, then the he starts talking to you through these like visions that manifest on the screen, and it's once you get the hotline right the hot is it well he does it before, before too yeah, yeah. Oh, okay you, you'll get those fmv show but you can't i don't actually maybe you still can rewatch them but i don't know i think you need you might need the hotline to rewatch yes those i scenes. think i think that's correct yeah and watch other scenes that they add as well yeah um but i just a side note too like getting into easter eggs a little bit but as you guys know that is james mccaffrey who voiced max Payne, and he's also featured in uh, alan wake so they, they they like to use him a lot for sure. Mm-hmm. Don't know if there's anything else there, but <laughs> I mean there are a ton of very explicit connections. But I think yeah. we should wait a little bit to get to that. Yeah, uh, frankly, um, the story I think after that part with the director it becomes really vague for a while. There's a lot of kind of exploring, understanding the rules of the world, right? Like what are altered objects? What are objects of power? Oh, there are other people still in the building that are not crazy. Like they've mm-hmm. got these devices that protect them from the hiss. They have their own objectives and their own kind of ideas about what's going on. We so, should mention that kind of Jesse's core goal is finding her brother, who she believes is somewhere in this building. Right. Yes. Which, for, I don't know. For me, I felt like that wasn't the focal point like for a while, and then it did become the focal point. Like for me, as the player, not necessarily her as the character. Yeah. Well, even like kind of early on, she says something something along the lines of I want to be here like it's not about my brother it's it's because I need to be here so there's you know more than that as well yeah um how did you guys feel about the side characters other than the janitor like the um what's her name I always want to call her Emily it's not Emily uh it's it is Emily right is it Emily or is it the blonde yeah yeah I think it's Emily yeah oh wow okay (laughs) is it it Emily Hope yeah that sounds right okay or Emily Pope Emily Pope that doesn't sound we're really, we're <laughs> we're really good at our jobs. Yeah, <laughs> I don't uh, remember, but but that's kind of the thing. A lot of the side characters I thought were interesting, but I never really like wanted to get to know them, except the janitor, I would say, and Dylan, who I spent a lot of time talking to, and that was strange. Their presence, though, confirms that what's happening isn't just all in Jesse's head. Yeah, right, or that like some of it is unique to her alone. Um, that for me was like an interesting point of. Um, reference like moving moving forward like where I would have a strange idea but then be like but wait a minute no that real person experienced it as well so that can't just be mm-hmm. an issue that Jesse is only coping with but some of them get really interesting I think like I forget her name but at some point you you can find this basement that goes to sort of like a natural underground environment like seemingly beneath the oldest house the pit the, right like the, the mold pit. area yeah, yeah. And I, did, I didn't do much down there it was too powerful for me and I haven't gone back yet it's it's oddly difficult that area even though it's not that long um, it's like a couple sections and then there's a boss fight but the, the basic enemies that are there they're deceptive because in multiple ways one because they like embed themselves in the ground until they're ready to fight you and then they kind of like slowly lurch up and you think oh it's just weak you know poisoned uh, vulnerable enemies 
but they 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 fire these like projectiles that are really hard to see and they, they hurt. Yeah. they do a lot they of do damage. a ton of damage yeah so some I, of them are like zombies but then the projectiles can do a lot fast yeah so i that, got to the point where whenever i'd i just keep dashing because right. i i wouldn't be able to see them a lot of times because i'd be focused on shooting something else yeah but once once you get down there like you see that i didn't go down there for a while and you see this mold throughout the building and it's like anytime you try to enter a room jesse is like taking damage and stuff and you're like okay i can't go there I beat the game before I ended up going down, which you don't have to do it in that order. But I go down there and there's like a scientist who's like working on mold. And she's like, all right, well, I need you to go collect some stuff. Here's some pills to make it so that you don't react to the mold. Um, and what's really interesting is how Jesse like, she's like, oh, this, this mold smells kind of delicious. Yeah. <laughs> she like gets like this hankering for the mold. And the scientist is like, I forget her reaction to it, but just that whole interaction is super weird. And she's like upset when you beat the mold boss because you've like, but yeah. my experiments. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, she says, yeah, Jesse returns and she's like, yeah, it smells really good. I kind of want to eat it. And she doesn't say not to. She's just like, oh, yeah, that's what happened to other people. They ate it. And then you kind of assume that, oh, so the mold smells good. So you eat it and then you turn into one of those things. Well, you know, she says, oh, did you see uh, this? And they go, yeah, that's my crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're killing them. But to that point, too, like, you know, the hiss are, for the most part, like, um, employees at the Federal Bureau of Control that have been turned by this power, a lot of them are just kind of floating in the air. Mm -hmm. Right. Harmless, but... Always whispering. Always whispering. Right? Always, like, you can never relax because yeah. something's just whispering. Yeah. As she says, it like burrows in you. <laughs> yeah. And the stuff that they say, like you kind of you get more of a sense of it once you start to meet Dylan. Um, but uh, they add really interesting atmosphere to just like an average area because there's just people just floating there like lifeless. But then out of nowhere, we'll materialize these other enemies that are way more, uh, <laughs> you need to pay attention to them or they will kill you. This game can be tough. Mm -hmm. It can be punishing, I guess, is the right word. For sure. That's where like my biggest issue comes in was the checkpointing system. Mm -hmm. There was a, f a number of bosses where I would die and I'd be so far back away because it would bring me to whatever the last fast travel spot was. And that might have even needed me to fight enemies before the boss which is just like the worst thing in games when i can't just like try again immediately that was like my biggest annoyance mm. yeah there was that one fight uh it was one of the last fights when you're i don't know you probably don't want to get into like the exact details yet but when you find polaris and you're climbing up the the, the yeah that one so, was so that like one in particular because i'd get to the last section and then i'd I'd die because I didn't have my shield up. And sometimes you'd get hit by one thing and you'd be done, especially like if you weren't upgrading guys your with health. The rocks, yeah. They do so much damage. I had to cheese that one. But the difficult yep. part about it is that if you wait too long between killing enemies and activating the button that raises the next platforms, enemies will respawn. Yep. Yep. And you can't like just ignore them and hit the button because they will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely had to like start that fight, jump back a section, and then I was just right. like sniping them with the pierce, and I was it, it took like ten minutes, and it was super cheap, but it finally got me through it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the idea of like using all your powers is pretty important as you go. Um, I think Jake, we talked about this in the podcast we just recorded, but like people who are having a hard time, I say, well, are you using your shield? It's like, no, no or like, are you, are you using C's? And it's like, no, I'm not. It's like, well, for me, those two things actually make a big difference, even though they don't yeah. feel impactful. C's was especially useful in that fight because you get one of those people flying around shooting rocks at you close to death, and then you'd seize them, and then that would distract the other ones so you could deal with all the other enemies in the, in the room. Yeah. C's I definitely leaned on quite a bit. I rarely ever used the shield, and I probably should have, but I just muscled my way through it. It was the only way for me to, like, get when I needed health to just sure protect myself. Yeah. You got to run. Did you, uh, speaking of just kind of hard bosses, did you guys do the anchor with like the vomiting clocks one? That one was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I must have missed that or have powered through it and moved on to the next thing. Cause I don't remember it and I haven't seen it, but there are still a couple places on the map. I haven't been, so maybe it's there. Sure. That one I thought was, was pretty hard. Uh, I still haven't beaten it. I need to go back and try it again, but I remember just not doing like any damage to it. And then it would just keep vomiting clocks on me. <laughs> Oh, that's because there's a certain way. There, there, there's, there, it's got a weak point that you have to okay, hit. Okay, so I assume yeah. there was something I needed. And to you have to, you have to. Well, at least I hit it with. I use like levitate or whatever to throw something at it. I didn't shoot it. Uh, okay. And, and it's like one of those things where you just got to hit it five times in that specific oh, way. So you right. can't. It's not just like a bullet sponge. Yeah. Um, but anyway, kind of like back onto the story. Uh, I mean, one of the the enemy of the game, right, is the hiss. Did you guys get a sense of exactly what that is, where it came from, like? It came from a different place and comes into our world through objects of, no, through 
the uh, altered. Uh, my there's, world ob- events. there's objects of power, the, and right. then there's altered world events. Mm-hmm. Art- yeah, right, correct. And then there's there's altered items too, and it, it came through altered items, right? It was it came through the uh, projector originally? Yeah. That's what started. That's correct. It. That's correct. Uh, but there are sometimes when like the doctor actually mentions like I think objects of power and altered world events as like interchangeable uh, 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 causes for the hiss like coming through in a particular mm-hmm. way, place, and time. I don't know what the hiss is really. Um, do you guys? It's just like it's, like a malevolent force, right? In some way, yeah. I yeah, don't know. And this I don't is... know if we can know what it is necessarily. The but the former does the former have anything to do with it? Do you guys know what I mean by the former? So so no. yeah, that that's the that's the the snake fucking boss thing, right? Have you done the fridge yet? I've done the fridge. I didn't know it had a name because I fought that snake thing like twice. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's called the former. Okay, mm-hmm. and what it, that mean? I mean, the former must mean something. It, it there's a there's a it, with the hotline. There's a log for it too. I don't know if you watched it oh, about the yet. former, and and they described it. I think it was. Shit, I don't remember exactly what they said the former was, but it wasn't a lot of information. It was like, yeah, the former is here and it is basically the opposite of us and it is trying to destroy the uh, the board. So could that not be, then be the source of... It could be part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of curious because you said you might fight the former multiple times, right? Someone told me that they fought it a second time. Because yeah, it kind of seems that way. I've only... It was you, yeah, because I haven't found the, the street light or the... Yeah, the, you, you fight it twice because the okay. first one's the fridge and then the second one is the flamingo, I believe, which is the... If you haven't done the street light, you still have another set of those to do from Langston's Yeah, missions. I and just the, started those. And then the last one is the flamingo and that leads to a, a harder fight of that. Okay. Gotcha. Well, so what happens after you beat it then? Just kind of the same thing. They were just like, "Hey, that thing was that thing with the one eye was there again." And Langston's like, "Oh yeah, we you know we've heard about that." So mm-hmm. that's why I was a little surprised that we knew more about it because Langston doesn't. Did you check the hotline after? I wonder if there's more information about it. I, well, we do know that there is an expansion coming in mm-hmm. development that will continue the story. So I have to imagine that's somehow linked. To yeah, that. it's like. <laughs> jumping ahead again, but it's pretty obvious that there's an expansion coming based on that. They say it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, the, your job's not finished. And it's like, dash, expansion coming. <laughs> so pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, you think that'll be like a new wing of the building? I hope it'll I hope it'll just be in the astral plane or something. Oh, yeah. It'll be okay. on the other side. I really hope so. Because we just Cause to me, that just ahead. sounds like combat know. challenges, which is like, I wouldn't want. I'd want more narrative kind of stuff. Well, well, there could still be narrative tied to that completely, I think. Like, it's just, I think the purpose of, like, what is the oldest house in terms of how it serves the the actions that you're taking? And, and the game leaves you with basically, like, well, you better clean up the oldest house of all the hiss, which I don't, I'm still not sure how that works out. Because I was, like, going to rooms and, like, shooting the floating people out of there, thinking, like, well, if I get rid of them, maybe their chance will, like, if they're gone, then that room won't have any more connection to that, like, that force, and maybe that's the whole point. But like, I feel like they were popping back. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming when they say there's like more to do, it's kind of just like you can keep playing at this, but like the game is over. There's no way to get like 100% clear. That's my. Uh, no, no, no. This thing says expansion. Well, no, but I mean like, you because you're trying to like actually clear out the hiss entirely, and I'm saying I doubt you could do that. That was probably just fluff to be like, hey, oh, oh, keep sure, fighting sure, the sure. bad guys. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess going back to Jesse, right? Do you think? Do you think there's more to? talk on jesse because one of the like i feel like when you find dylan you learn more about her and her past in ordinary and you were even saying that like i'm curious uh for you to explain the alan wake connection to ordinary wait there's an alan wake connection to ordinary? yeah i missed this well so it's not in the game um back when remedy was talking about making alan wake 2 and it didn't happen because of whatever reason he was like, yeah, I mean, the idea was it was going to be set in this town called Ordinary. Oh. Um, so therefore, I'm looking at Control as, holy shit, this comes after Alan Wake 2. Whatever Alan Wake 2 is. So it could star and focus around Jesse. And those... Even if she's not the main like character. Like that projector 2 in Ordinary or something? Cause, Interesting. Huh. I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because I think more so than any other... Uh, they, they reference Alan Wake more than any other Remedy game. Yeah, yeah. and in plus, the, so the the there's this these scenes where Jesse performs rituals and she's like transported back to this 
uh, this hotel or motel or motel, whatever. the Ocean View Motel. Yeah, which feels very akin to something in the Pacific Northwest. Like I was like, Alan this Wake this seems been. like the Twin Peaks Sheriff Department. Right. Yeah, exactly. The only thing, though, well, I mean, obviously, what their original pitch for Alan Wake Two, right, was that it would be like a desert town. But I could oh, really? actually see that. Well, town they did American Nightmare, being, which was kind of a deserted town. Yeah, but but the 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 pitch because I think Polygon did a thing recently where they showed Remedy showed Polygon like. 15 minutes of their oh yes yes. yeah and that was supposed to take place in a desert town but once again that's a pitch like things could have changed you know but still even that hotel looks like a hotel you could find and you know driving through the middle of nowhere in america you're in the desert and all of a sudden there's a hotel called the oceanside hotel and there's no ocean nearby but you know that's what tourists might want yeah and and so for jesse like that location is uh if i'm remembering it correctly sort of like the 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 catalyst for like what happened to her and Dylan as kids and why they got involved with like all this mm-hmm. investigation into the paranormal to begin with. Um, but I am honestly wait. You're saying Jesse and them went to the Ocean View Motel because I thought they went to the Astral Plane as well, kids. No, no, no. Well, he's saying that in the real world, I think the Ocean View Hotel might be an ordinary, right? Is what you're? Yeah, but because well, they mentioned that it's nowhere. They've like looked. I mean, there's documents saying like no, they can't find where the Ocean View Motel is. Uh, like, it doesn't exist on the map. But neither does ordinary anymore, right? But at least that was definitely a place. Like they recreated it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they did. I just mean like if, from, from what I was picking up, the understanding was the Ocean View Motel like doesn't physically exist, but they can get mm-hmm. to it because they had other like people from the oldest house going to it and talk and and experiencing it. What if it exists because Alan Wake wrote about it? Yeah, maybe that could be the thing. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> These are the, things, the game makes it tough. I mean, it, it it can, as I think we're illustrating, it can really depend on the documents you find and what you yep. read into them. Um, I think it's a good segue to talk about more of the connections with Alan Wake, because it seems like Alan Wake was an altered world event right. that this game, you know, re, kind of recontextualizes. Yeah, so what did they say the object of power was? They said the lake itself, right? And Alan Wake was the... Or was it the thermos? Oh, I... The thermos was part of it too, because you find it in his manuscript was as well, because you find both of those in the Panopticon behind. Mm. Well, you found the thermos, right? You do find the thermos, and you even you even get one of those like pictures of it, like you do for all of the like altered items. Yeah, so, so it's definitely one of them. Did you find it in the Panopticon though, or did you find it? I, I don't remember where I found it. I definitely did find the thermos at some point. Because I found that secret area, which I was telling you guys about yesterday, where you it's like on the top level of Panopticon. You have to have levitate. You fly over there. And you find a, a a note, and you read the note, and it was like, "This is all we could understand from the page. The rest was scribbled out, and it was it was like, this is from Alan Wake's manuscript." And then you walk closer to it, and then just like you see the director, that silhouette, that happens with Alan Wake, and he reads the page to you, like his voice actor. Interesting. And then right next to it, there's the thermos too. Anyway, that's it's another very tangent. O- it's very <laughs> obvious they're, yeah. they're going for an Alan Wake connection here. Um, mm-hmm. You find documents, you know, apart from everything else you just said, on top of that, you find documents that refer to him, refer to his wife. Right. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised. I don't exactly remember how American Nightmare ended, but I wouldn't be surprised if, like, he's still somewhere in the astral plane. Because the end of Alan Wake, he's trapped in there. Like, he trades himself for his wife to get out. Really? Um, okay. And that's and then he stays in the cabin in, like, underwater or whatever it is. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that's how we can talk to you, is maybe people in the astral plane can. This is why I need to go back and, and play both Alan Wake games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever finished American Nightmare. I should probably do that. Well, from what I remember, though, it wasn't super story heavy compared no, to the... No, and like it was a lot of like repeating the same section over and over with as it, as it got shorter. So it's it's a pretty short playthrough. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd also recommend the DLC for Alan Wake was pretty yeah. cool as well. Mm-hmm. I did um, play those. So Dylan. So Dylan. Can you guys talk to me about Dylan? Because I feel like there was a, a moment in my playthrough where I kind of like stopped paying attention and then it was like, wait a minute. Now he's in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what power does he wield over the various pieces at play? So he's he's definitely special, like Jesse. Yes. So he can interact with the whatever entities going on the powers mu- in a much stronger way than right and regular the, people. The hiss were using him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like an amplifier, more or less. Right. Which that's so, what kind of happens to Jesse at the very end. But she has Polaris. Which, but she gets right. out of it. Um, what one thing I'm kind of confused about is Polaris good or bad? Because I feel like at one point you're good for the most part, then it's bad in that fight, and then she's like, "Oh wait, 
maybe I shouldn't have done that. And like, she goes back and forth a couple times and I got a little lost. I'm not even exactly sure what Polaris is other than a huge object. Yeah. <laughs> but also, what, that, that thing was empty, right? When right, it, like, it looked like and, it was, And then yeah. they straight up, I think they even comment, like, it wasn't even in there. Right. And it was like, well, what? <laughs> but what you are we even this talking big about? facility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how's it? Um, yeah, I mean, you guys mentioned uh, Dylan kind of, like, invading your head. I mean, there's that false credit sequence. Right. When the credits roll, and Jake hit me up, and he, <laughs> I forget if he <laughs> text from him, and he was like, I think I just got the bad ending in a JRPG in this game. <laughs> and I was sitting there, and I was like, three. Two, one. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, wait a minute," because <laughs> yeah, the credits start rolling, and it really does feel like that. Just the sort of like, I guess it's over, but nothing. Yeah, well, especially like, like not to keep going back to Alan Wake, but Alan Wake's ending I thought was pretty abrupt, especially without the DLC. And I was like, "Oh, don't do this again." <laughs> uh, and then it kept going to one of the more interesting parts of the game, a short part, but it was, yeah, I don't know. Like, so that was her trapped in the hiss, right? That was what it's like to be in the hiss. Right. And, like it. and it's implied that that's kind of like what happened to Trench, which caused him to shoot himself. But then there's also the part where it was Jesse that shot him. So was she, and did she shoot him? Dylan, who was holding But also the there. So head. there's some kind of like loop maybe possibly happening. Yeah. She does do her hand mind thing to Dylan at the end and then puts him into the coma. Right. So we don't mm -hmm. know if he's good or not. He's got to have something to do with whatever's coming next for this game. Why else would he still be around? Yeah. For sure. Just to look at. I gotta. Yeah, well, uh, I know you missed it, but if you go chat with him, you can keep chatting with right. him and chatting with him and yeah. chatting with him. And you can do it for a long time. And every time it's just like, I had a dream. And, <laughs> and he'll describe these very odd and weird dreams. But one of those dreams was that I had a dream that you were my assistant and we were, you were my, you were my assistant and I was the director at, at the, the, the FBC um, and we were, we were doing the same things every day over and over and over and okay. over and over and over again. And at the time I was like, what the, and then, but, but when you get to that, that he's like describing the hiss right there, right? It's her just doing the same things over and over and over again, her trying to get out of it. So that's an interesting little connection, I guess. And then how does that all work with people who are seemingly normal, who are stuck in this scenario? Like, how are they not, in, uh, how are they not referencing the fact that like, that, that like Jesse is caught in this loop. They never say anything to her. Like, yeah. To that regard. Like, well, I took that as this was all just in her head. Like she's stuck in this fake head. But even though after you beat the game, they're still there. You can still talk to them. They can still work with you. Like if you've effectively broken free of that, oh, doesn't, I see that what you're doesn't that fall outside of that? Right. I wonder if everyone who you do fight is similarly trapped in some kind of like looping. Yeah. Well, I, I think so. I, I think that was the point. Like that's the hiss. When the hiss has you, you're just, you work at the FBC. Right. You you like you work in the government FPC where you're just uh, delivering mail or cleaning up mugs that never seem to disappear. Right. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But the people who are in the existence that you're playing most of the game in are not doing those things. I mean, they're wearing things protecting them from the Yeah, mess. the I mean, HRAs, they're right? They're aware of it like it's a thing that 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 is real to them. Um and as you are real to them and not mm -hmm. Oh, well, they even comment like, "Oh, weird, you don't have your HRA on. I guess you don't need one." Huh? Yeah. Huh. Okay. It's, so the the HRA though that is, it's basically like the Polaris thing that is channeling that to protect other people, right? I didn't know it's connected to Polaris. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. The, I mean, I, there's a giant HRA right before you go into Polaris that you have to shoot down. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. So, but isn't that just holding? Isn't that just containing? Maybe, maybe that's what it is. It's containing what's in there. I yeah. don't know. I in my head, I was just like, oh, so they all have that. It's got a giant. Or no, I guess, right, that would be protecting it from the hiss. That's what I expected. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> what else to talk about? I don't know. Um, I, I do think we should talk about the maze. Uh, yes. My favorite part of the game. Uh, I thought that was super cool. And you know the developers very love remedy. it. very uh, remedy. Because as soon as it's done, she, like, takes off the headphones, and she's just like, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, but he'll just, like, break that down. Uh, so you get to a place called the Ashtray Maze. Yeah. And you get it early on. Did you guys go to it before you like really could do it? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, and you just kind of run in a circle over and over again. I have no idea what to do. I mean, and there's like, there's paintings on the wall or photos on the wall like of the maze. And I was thinking like, okay, well, if I look at, if I look at the one on the wall, then that means the wall will dissolve or reopen on this side. Basically, it's like you're going down hallways and walls are opening up or closing around you. 
as you progress. And yeah, like I, I was trying to find some sort of logic in there. Right. And I, I was pushing that for a while. And, and they do do that like, in other ways. Games, well, you know? I was trying to beat it too. I was like, maybe if I dash in oh, there, yeah. and like, oh, I or did, maybe yeah. do my like super punch through the wall, like <laughs> and yeah. make it. All right. Um, so yeah, you can't get anywhere with that. And then eventually, oh, what's the what's the super weird area that's like, Almost forest like, or where you get the headphones. What was that one called again? Well, th that's that's the other thing I want to talk about. That's uh, the janitor. When the janitor's on vacation, it's like right, and you're following his little like orange. Yeah, light. it's like this yes. dark black pit with pillars, and you see an ocean, and he's just hanging out down there. <laughs> yeah, and he gives you uh, like an old Walkman, like a tape player, yeah. uh, with like his buddy's song, or I forget how he refers to it. But then, yeah, it's like this rock song that I guess if you're wearing it will like fight the maze or open up the maze for you. Yeah. And that what oh it was just so cool. It it's like a it's not a good song, but the energy of it, it's it's like it's like a like a cathartic just kind of like release because yeah, like that maze you were trying to go through, oh my god, I'm finally going through it and holy shit, yeah. now there's a bunch of combat and there's all this rock and roll happening around me. Like right. and the maze to the itself is super cool. Like floors will just open up or right. giant pillars will come out. Like yeah. it, the whole reality is like completely destroyed inside of this maze. It's like, it's like a fun house, which yeah. the oldest house is not fun <laughs> for the most part <laughs> in that way. It, it really does embrace. Um, another thing too, that we should probably talk about because we mentioned it earlier was that there is one mirror in this game. Right. Yes. I liked this part. Of and it, that, that even more feeds into what Rob, when you were saying there's no mirrors, but there is that one mirror that is the reverse of, jesse and it is like the literal reverse i don't know if you guys interacted with the 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 tape player there but all yep. that was reversed yep uh, oh really yep. yeah yeah because so the premise on that is they sent an agent into the mirror he came back and he's like talking backwards and they're like we can't understand you and then when you go into the mirror you can go to the same tape and now you can hear him but the people outside are all backwards so you get the other half of it and he's like there's something in here like you, you gotta like lock that down and then you realize oh there's a fight coming of some kind of some sort and then Twin Peaks speaking all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, so at this point now, we've all finished the game. Where are you guys in terms of going back in? Are you trying to scour the environment for any missed notes? Is that something you're interested in? Are you just reading the ones you have? Are you just hanging out, fighting stuff? I, I'm still looking for notes. I'm looking for, I, I'm trying to do all of the side stuff because it seems like for the most part, a lot of that seems pretty interesting. Not the not not the stuff that pops up every now and then. Like you got twenty minutes to clear out this room or whatever. But yeah, the, right stuff's annoying. The the side stuff, like finding tracking down the the altered items. Uh, because first of all, they put you in a position where you find different bits of lore that you may have missed. And then second of all, a lot of those boss fights are pretty cool. Like there's yeah. some really cool side bosses. Like the former we're talking about, the plant mm -hmm. thing, which. Uh, and then the, 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 the anchor is really cool. The stoplight's pretty interesting. It's not really a boss, but yeah, how it's you, just a cool way to interact with how it. You do, it's pretty obvious. I, I won't say it just in case you do it, but it's is it like uh, a stop go. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. Much yep, it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Figured it out. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. <laughs> yeah. That's the streetlight for you. What about uh, you, Peter? Are you still playing it? Yeah. Um, I'm trying my best to find little notes here and there and I keep finding them. Um, and I was fairly meticulous on my, my first playthrough, but. Um, the the nature of the map in this game is that it's not very helpful, uh, and yes, in in the sense of really dissecting where you have or have not been, because uh, basically you enter like a general area and it's like sick you've done you've been to this area, but it's like wait what about that little office or what about that you know I'm still finding like level six doors it's like oh I I haven't mm -hmm. been here because this thing is red you know it means I haven't unlocked it. Um, did you find the door with all the office just with sticky notes everywhere? Yeah. Did you find the note about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen this. It Some guy like, is like, he's like, who, who the hell put all these sticky notes all over my office? Or he like, or he blames it on, you know, objects of power or something like that. But it's just this really funny. He's like, I can't work here anymore. <laughs> like, I need a new office. <laughs> did you find the office though? Like, see it? No, I haven't seen it's this. It's literally like, it's just a normal office, but every inch is a post-it note. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you can see there are gaps between them so you can like see what they're on. But yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah, you, this, I mean, the, the whole game is pretty dire, but Remedy definitely had fun with, like, what would be just something silly that would happen in this, like, or, or having, like, a book club in here and people just getting upset because right. they didn't read the book club right. for this week. Yeah, or uh, there's those posters everywhere, too, that are, like, just because the just because the location of your meeting is changed due to the building doesn't mean <laughs> you're excused for being late. 
Yeah, or there's one about like, hey, I've been, you know, I've I've worked really hard for my position. Why is there still no executive bathroom anymore? I know it moved, but can right. someone at least tell yeah. me where it went to? <laughs> we keep bringing it up. That guy is so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> they play really, they play around really well with like the, all of that, and that comes through a lot in the FMVs as well. I think the the videos that are embedded throughout the world. That last one before the final boss, uh, the music video. Oh, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I can't remember if I watched that one. It's in the Ocean View Motel. It's the last time you go there before the very end. It's in, like, the third room. Yeah. It's, like, the, the song is, like, Jesse's the Bomb. And oh, it's yes. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's, like, an 80s video, yeah, right, with, do, with, with the doctor. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, I, it's you just couldn't stop watching. Like, I couldn't stop watching it. I went in, and I was, like, all right, well, I have to and see the like end of this. And he has, like, inflatable guitar and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's very good. So then what about Dr. Darling, too? Because he disappears... Right, you don't meet him at all, but you get very used to who he is, and he he right. explains he made the HRAs. Yeah, a lot of the game to you. Do you have any idea what happened to him? No, I'm. Wrong. I could see that being like the DLC, like he's trapped in the astral plane. You got to get him or something. I'm sure I'm wrong, but there was like a time where I was like, where it had one of those like director kind of like mind invasion things, and I was like, why do I feel like I'm looking at the doctor? Like, why do I feel like? That's him. Isn't that Trench? Well, I know yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be Trench, okay, but like okay. my brain was just like, if I look at this hard enough, is it, is it <laughs> him? I'm, I'm grasping at straws here. I, I totally realize that. Um, and that's 100% probably not the case, but I, I don't know. Like there's gotta be, like, cause there are videos where he's like at wit's end, right? Where he's yeah, like, Yeah, he's in right. his underwear. Yep. Like, yeah. Cold yep. sweats and everything. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. I have to feel like he's involved somehow. Yeah, he was too more. important of a character for them not to actually have like a finale to whatever yeah. happened to him. So it's got to be in the next thing or it's got to be coming somewhere. Well, yeah. That's the other thing too. I wonder if there's just, like you were saying, I wonder if there's info that some of us may have glossed over, missed that, maybe not explain it, but gives hints as to what could happen to him. Because I kind of thought, like, I, I thought he just got swallowed up in one of the projector, in the projector or whatever, and he's just like chilling in there or something like that that has swallowed him. I don't know. I want to make the the board, right, where you put up all the concepts yeah. and you draw lines and stuff. Like, I, I need someone to do that. I need I, I need Remedy to tell us what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it from them because I, I just feel like if you miss one thing, you're going to get 10 things wrong about the story or the characters yeah, or sure, the reality yeah, yeah. of it all. Yeah, there's a lot to it for sure. Yeah. And I'm a big dummy, so. Me too. I'm excited for those hour-long YouTube videos of someone who has oh, yeah. dedicated their three months of research to yeah. figuring out exactly... How, and there'll still be things they're missing that'll frustrate them. Uh, anyway, I mean, I think that's... I don't know. Is there anything else worth bringing up? Or do you think that... I think uh, one thing that in the real world that's kind of interesting is this website, SPC, or the SPC. Yeah, I... I did want to mention that too. I'm kind of getting like turned on to it today and I, I'm trying to dig into it more. It's been a kind of a busy day, but this is essentially like a repository for fiction that kind of deals with altered world events and objects of power in a way. And it isolates them as like different cases. And you know, it's obviously it's all fiction, but the way that it's written and compiled pretty much feels like a collection of occurrences and analysis and what, what became of that. And um, some info is redacted. It's it's really interesting. Like there was one about basketball where it was like the DVR recording of this basketball game was uh, effectively a thing that people could tap into. And the observer, when they watched the game, could actually change the outcome. And so people would watch the game, start it over, but because they knew it so well, the score would be like 0-0. Zero, zero, and they like were trying to like, okay, well, was it the game or was it the DVR? So they watched other things on the DVR and like, no, that didn't have it. It was literally like this one recording of this one game on this one DVR. And they're like, and we had to stop testing because everyone involved in the project ended up, you know, getting really kind of like you read in a lot of these notes in Control. It was like, and the testing stopped because the subjects were experiencing distress and, and right. mental pain and anguish. And that's yeah. The I, so the website is scp-wiki.net. Um, but yeah, it seems like there's a lot of interesting Along stuff the same on lines as control, yeah, for sure. One thing that I would like is, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe when you beat the game, an option to turn off all of the redacted stuff so you could oh, go through the notes and see. So at some point 
in those notes, it'll always say like, for more information, refer to document X Y Z. Yeah, I feel like I was finding when I was like looking back at old materials I collected that like there was less that was redacted because. Maybe that was because I found a different document. Oh. That's another thing I kind of need to look into a little bit more. But I, maybe again, my brain was playing tricks on me. But I really felt like, okay, wait a minute. This, I definitely read this before and there definitely didn't, didn't have this info. But it's an object of power. <laughs> Altered item. Administrative power. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. These are all the questions I That's have. super I, I, interesting. I never even really thought to like look back at previous ones again. It could just be... <laughs> me you know reading into nothing but um yeah yeah i'm cool. excited to see what like the subreddit on this game ends up finding because i bet there's just a ton of stuff yeah i yeah. want remy to be like no it's supposed to not make sense there is no cohesive <laughs> hold everything yeah <laughs> i like that david lynch interview like what does racer head mean he's like i'm not telling <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh anyway that is control that's our spoiler chat there we probably didn't answer any of your questions nope uh, but hopefully this may be, I don't know, maybe there's answers to some questions that we have that you found out that you can leave in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any theories, whatever, yeah, let just, us know. Yeah, yeah. Tell us how wrong we are. Yeah. I would love to know how wrong I am because that'll get me closer to the truth. So please. Yeah. All right. Very Thank cool. you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Bye all. Bye.